This ranking is based on a 1 to 10 scoring system that aggregates critic and gamer reviews into a unique score called the play score. As much as new reviews show up and are added, the play score changes. Ranked 15th is Tales of Hearts R. The long-awaited Western release of this Nintendo DS classic is a joyous time for JRPG fans on the Vita. Combat is superb! It's much like the other games on the series. A mix of real-time action and RPG elements are used to bring about that signature Tales action. And with an interesting story, it sure is a classic. A play score of 8.05. 14th is Hyper Dimension Neptunia Rebirth 2 Sisters Generation. It's more of the same Hyper Dimension Neptunia games. So, cute characters, hilarious dialogue, and awesome music. It polishes what works and trims out what doesn't. The product is a lighthearted RPG that learns from the mistake of the previous releases, brimming with unlockables, bosses, and quests. Overall, it's a well balanced game and probably the best of the series. A play score of 8.1. At number 13 is Rainbow Moon. Akin to the likes of Final Fantasy Tactics, this game concentrates more on the basics of turn-based style of gaming. Despite the graphics being a little bit cartoony, clearly, the animation could have been better. The fundamentals are rock solid, which means the gameplay is pretty good. There's tons of content, surprising for a downloadable game. And the combat and roleplay mechanics are spot on. Rainbow Moon deserves a play score of 8.13. Twelfth place is R No Search Plus Ode to an Unborn Star. A PlayStation 3 port that works really well with a tiny Vita console. The game excels with its interesting art style and amazing soundtrack. Coupled with a gripping story, it invites you to see it through the end. Just be prepared for the massive amount of dialogue that you have to read through. Our No Search Plus has a play score of 8.16. Number 11 is Freedom Wars. This game is as good as it looks. This game delivers. Exceptional graphics, awesome combat style, good soundtrack, and a very satisfying multiplayer gameplay. Fight huge enemies by using grappling hooks for vertical maneuvers and closing distances fast, quickly switching between melee and ranged weapons. If not for the confusing crafting system, it may have ranked higher on the list. Freedom Wars gets a play score of 8.2. Ranked 10th place is Oreshka Tainted Bloodlines. This is an unusual game. Although it has an interesting plot propelled by slightly complex mechanics, gorgeous watercolor art style that combines anime and traditional Japanese imagery, it has a deep family lineage system, impressive customization, and a solid turn-based RPG combat. It's not the first game to offer customizable characters, but the game's so interesting with its storyline that it makes the task worth it, even enjoyable, despite it being time-consuming. Play score of 8.25. 9th place is Tokiden Kiwami. This game has a lot of similarities with the games of the Monster Hunter series. The difference is that it's more fast-paced, mythical, sinister, and complete. It comes with a meaningful story, good cutscenes, and NPC relationship. There are tons of bonus content like owning a pet, new weapons, and a good co-op gameplay. Just want to say, the sheer number of dialogues is so JRPG, and the grind is the real deal. Play score of 8.3. Eighth on our list is Atelier Yesha Plus, The Alchemist of Dusk. This game is a deep and engrossing role playing game that gives emphasis to gathering materials and crafting. It's time consuming, yeah, but that doesn't even dampen the fun experience that it offers. With a good story, good character progression, it looks great on the Vita, by the way. It has engaging crafting in the alchemy system, and it comes packed with crazy amount of DLCs. The Alchemist of Dusk has a play score of 8.41. Number 7 is The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. 
The game doesn't add much to the RPG genre. It just took what worked and put it back together as solidly as possible. Yeah, it's not revolutionary, but it's pretty amazing. There are a lot of things to do. There's a good balance between RPG and simulation. The fast travel option is a really good addition, as well as the cross save for Vita and PS3 owners. The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel has a play score of 8.48. Rack 6 is Child of Light. I don't get tired of saying this, this is one good looking game. It looks like something from an art exhibit, carefully animated to look just as magnificent. Child of Light does away with the cumbersome battle features, aiming for a more straightforward and refined turn based combat system. This gorgeous Disney like adventure has a play score of 8.58. Fifth place is Muramasa Rebirth. Dark times have befallen feudal Japan as cursed demon blades attack humans causing destruction to all. Muramasa Rebirth might not be your typical RPG, but for the most part, this game taught me how not to be rash and to think before you fight. Cleverly ration your items, create strategies, and allot stat points on the right places. Muramasa Rebirth has a play score of 8.61. Number 4 is Disgaea 4, A Promise Revisited. As addicting as ever, this fourth installment has been a bumpy ride of raising weak followers and customizing every weapon that I found interesting. The same strategic grid-based combat that you love, plus a new function called Demon Fuse, which temporarily combines your monsters into one bigger, meaner monster. A play score of 8.71. Third on our list is E's Memories of Salsetta. This is a story about finding what's lost. It's a game that rewards you for mastering moves, very action RPG-like. Despite the lack of an engrossing story, it's still worth the play for the exploration and the combat. With good battle soundtrack, slightly dated but pleasing graphics, and uh, sad to say linearity decreased the game's lifespan and it's a minus one for some. E's Memories of Salsetta gets a play score of 8.72. Ranked number 2 is Dragon's Crown. This is a game that looks like it came out of pen and paper. Vanillaware's best RPG yet. Dragon Crown is an action-packed side-scroller that some hesitantly label as RPG, but with its deep skill system, multiple classes to choose from, solid loot feature, and beautiful art style, there is no doubt that it's one of the most unique and gorgeous role-playing games on the platform. Dragon's Crown earns a play score of 8.74. Stay tuned for the runners-up right after we reveal the number one. And the best on the Vita is Persona 4 Golden. This is a game so good that many gamers around the world would have probably played it at least twice. This game perfectly represents the JRPG subgenre of role-playing games with a brilliant story full of high school life, humor, and mystery. Memorable, attachable, and relatable characters, fantastic dialogue, wide variety of personas, turn-based JRPG at its finest, and a massive 40 to 60 hour campaign. Persona 4 Golden gets a play score of a whopping 9.34. And here are the runners up. Your game's not on the list? Leave a comment below and we'll just tell you its play score. Want to know the play score of newly released video games on PC, console, and mobile? Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and Instagram.